Hello and welcome to a special bonus edition of the RadioTimes.com Doctor Who podcast. You thought you were free of us for the week, but here we came back again like a bad smell. Um, but the reason we're here is because, I mean, you know why we're here. I mean, it's the biggest news in Doctor Who land. Uh, Morgan, what's happening? Well, yeah, I rue the day. I, I wished for Series 13 news. Um, so it's finally official. Jodie Whittaker is leaving Doctor Who. Um, it's been rumoured for a few months now, but the BBC has now put out a statement. Jodie herself has put out a statement. It's official. She's leaving uh, Doctor Who after one more series and a trilogy of specials, but that's not it. Chris Chibnall, uh, current Doctor Who showrunner, is also departing alongside her. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a big old exodus. Uh, in a statement, Jodie said, I know change can be scary and none of us know what's out there. That's why we keep looking. Travel, hopefully. The universe will surprise you constantly. That's a bit, bit of a random quote that I pulled out there, but it's something she said in the press release. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and Chris Chibnall said a line I really enjoyed, which was, I can't imagine working with a more inspiring doctor, so I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> which you could take, uh, you know, if Jodie was, you know, was, was reading between the lines, you know, she could take that quite personally, though. That's obviously, that's not what he meant. Um, but yeah, so it's big news. I mean, we're a little shell-shocked here. Um, we've obviously, like Morgan says, heard these rumours for months, since about January, about Jodie possibly leaving. And it did seem relatively likely, but for the news to kind of just be confirmed is obviously massive. Um, also, the fact that uh, Chris Chibnall's leaving is huge, um, because, you know, that's often a, a much bigger change to the show than a Doctor leaving, although it's not as obvious a change from the outside. Um, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not as cosmetic a change, right? But I think we've probably talked about it in this podcast before about how, to me, if anything, the Chris Chibnall news feels bigger. Now, partly, I think that's because the Jody news was, was telegraphed to a degree um, with, with the rumours um, you know, building these past few months. So it, it feels more like a, like a confirmation than a big reveal. Um, but I think the, the rumours, again, were initially that while she was leaving, Chibnall would be would be staying on as a showrunner. So, and the the statement they've put out um, seems to suggest that it was always the plan that they would do three series together and then leave together. That was kind of their pact uh, mm. that they made from the offset. Um, from so the they've outset. been lying to us from the beginning. <laughs> well, what, what you know? What are you re even really a Doctor Who showrunner if you don't lie to fans? It's true. Uh, I think Chris I think Chibnall just became Doctor Who showrunner today. <laughs> <laughs> but I but I do think yeah it, it feels like a bigger deal if anything that Chris Chibnall's leaving than Jodie partly because we suspected she was leaving anyway but also because as you said I think the showrunner changing actually you know to the general public maybe not and, and cosmetically maybe not but to fans it actually has a bigger impact like I was thinking about this and you know Doctor Who under Russell T Davies was more or less the same show whether it had Christopher Eccleston or David Tennant as the Doctor. There were slight slight shifts and changes in tone. Um, and actually the change from Matt Smith to Peter Capaldi, I'd say, was more, more pronounced. But I'd say generally the change in showrunner has a bigger impact on the show in the modern era. Um, you know, those, the, the Russell T Davies era, the Stephen Moffat era, the Chris Chibnall era, to me feel more distinct than, you know, the Matt Smith era does to the, the Peter Capaldi era, for example. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, it it's hard to know how big a change we're going to get here because the last time we had this big a change was obviously Chris Chibnall and Jodie Whittaker. So it could mm. be something completely different. And yeah, in a way, with Jodie leaving, it's kind of like, in my head, I was like, okay, so we could talk about how we feel about that, you know, what, looking back at a doctor as a whole. It kind of feels like we've done it. We, you know, we've been talking about it, you know, in different podcasts. And obviously the time will come when she actually leaves at the end of 2022 to so do a proper retrospective. We've still got nine more episodes from her. But yeah, you do kind of look further forward, you look kind of more behind the scenes at the big changes that they're going to be. I mean, one thing we should know is uh, there are going to be successors to both of them. Um, the mm. BBC confirmed that in a press release, which is, I think, a little unusual. I don't think they'd normally sort of reference that, but maybe because there have been these, uh, you know, comment pieces in the press and articles hinting, you know, maybe the show should be rested or the show should be cancelled. And they said specifically that the, the new generation of Doctor Who Starring Jean-Luc Picard. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Doctor Who, the next generation. Yeah, yeah Doctor Who, the next generation, um, you know, will be announced in due course. Um, and obviously they also said, also, we've still got over a year of Jodie Whittaker. go. And then uh, Chris Chibnall also kind of nods. So he says, oh, whoever our successors are, who the BBC and BBC Studios pick, you know, I wish them all the best. I hope they have as much fun as we did. So they are going to 
you know, that's in motion, it would seem. We don't know mm-hmm. what the kind of time scale on it is on that because last time when Stephen Moffat left, the, the announcement he was leaving was bundled together with and Chris Chibnall's taking over, mm-hmm. um, which was like a whole thing. And that was ages ago. That was back in 2016, I think. So it was a couple of years before Chibnall actually took over. So, you know, they could have technically announced for next year or no. Um, now, they might already know for all we know, but they might also might not. And, you know, I'm guessing it's something we should kind of, maybe at the end of the current series, uh, well, the upcoming series, they'll kind of roll something out. But yeah, it is nice to know that Doctor Who kind of does still have an immediate future, because I think there have been some concerns about that. Yeah, it's got that sort of almost like a, a James Bond will return tag um, yes. in the, in that, uh, you know, that you get at the end of the James Bond movies. Uh, it's that kind of thing. Yeah, no, because there has been speculation, you know, or, you know, some some uh quarters of fandom have, have, have said you know doctor who should rest um but no it, it's it's very clear that the show is is on is going to continue um and that there will be immediate successors to both jodie whitaker and chris chivnall um uh, you know having said that we're saying there's not going to be a hiatus certainly doctor who's not going to be rested in the traditional sense in the sense that all fans fear um <laughs> ever since sort of 1986 and 1989 um it does still seem to be an ongoing concern for the bbc you know, that said, as you, as you said, okay, possibly Chris Chibnall's uh, successor and Jodie's successor for a wiener has already been uh, selected and they're just choosing not to announce it immediately and they're, you know, pacing these announcements um, so we don't get whiplash. Um, but possibly neither has been selected yet, in which case it will take a little bit of time to get them into place. It's going to take a little bit of time, you know, in, in this COVID era to you know, stage uh, the next series of Doctor Who anyway, like... So I wouldn't be surprised if we're in for a little bit of a break. I don't think a lengthy hiatus, but like I could certainly see, um, you know, we're getting, uh, which we'll touch on in a minute, we're getting, you know, a series and, and then specials taking us into 2022. I could certainly see no Doctor Who on air for 2023 um, at, at the very least. I think that's pretty plausible, to be honest. Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a gap, right? Like there's got to be. There yeah. was a, I mean, there wasn't a huge gap between... Peter Capaldi and Jodie Whittaker, longer gap than we'd had between some other doctors. But yeah, I, 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 I think that's what we can anticipate. Although you never know, because obviously they, they are currently filming um, the current series and the specials for next year and will be done in the next couple of months. So there will be a whole year at which point Doctor Who is still airing, but they're not making it. So the next team could technically at some point in that, you know, also, kick off. Yeah. Also, having just having said that they may not have selected his showrunner yet, you think it's the kind of job you'd have a fairly lengthy notice period. I'm thinking showrunner <laughs> in particular here, right? You'd have to kind of let the BBC know you're thinking about leaving quite far in advance. And that, you know, and Doctor Who's an important property to them. They want to make sure that whoever takes it over next you know, is the right pair of hands. So those conversations will presumably have been um, you know, in, in the works for quite some time. Um, and also, it, who's to say, you know, it's one of those things that has become become tradition but may not stay a tradition but i always quite liked um the the handover that would happen between showrunners where i think russell t davies wrote everything up until david tennant regenerates in end of time part two and then Stephen moffat wrote matt smith's first scene in that episode and likewise with um uh twice upon a time and, and moffat and chibnall although i guess chris chibnall just wrote brilliant and then she falls out of the tardis like i guess that i guess there's not quite as much dialogue in that scene um but I always quite liked that there was the next showrunner in place and they literally wrote like the first scene of their doctor. Um, but again, that may not come into play here because who's to say you know, the the uh, centenary special, which we'll get onto, could just end with Jodie, you know, regenerating. And even if the next doctor appears, they may not have any dialogue. It may mm. still then fall to the next showrunner to write their first proper scene um in in the next uh in the next episode could next even series. end on a regeneration cliffhanger you know we've not really seen that a, a proper yeah, one like, for a while or like you know a proper proper one ever really and that'd be quite a cool thing to do as i was saying that i was thinking that and i was like would they would they have the the, the gumption to do that like imagine if, if if it just ended i mean i i wonder i feel like if you knew who the next doctor was going to be ending a story on a on a regeneration where you don't see the next doctor it'd be a bit pointless. That feels, yeah it just yeah. feels like well we like just show show us whoever who it is. is we know it's X. yeah you know we yeah. saw them do an interview yeah. about it on the one show 
<laughs> yeah, exactly right. The only way it would work is ending on a on a regeneration, not revealing who the next Doctor is, if you don't already know who the next Doctor is. Which, again, you know, it's kind of like all bets are off at this stage. We don't we really don't know what's going to happen next. No, and it's quite exciting, I think. And um, we will in future weeks. We're going to, you know, dissect the hell out of this. We're going to have, you know, we'll probably have episodes about who the next showrunner could be and who the next Doctor could be, obviously. But oh, yeah. for now, we'll try and keep it relatively focused. Um, the one thing that's also been announced today that we should talk about, as Morgan said, was uh, this centenary special, which is also kind of how the next episodes of Doctor Who are going to unfold. So we kind of said um, in our last podcast, which was like a day ago, uh, <laughs> um, about like, oh, here's all the th- series 13 news. Little did we know um, that, you know, maybe they'll do, uh, you know, a shorter series and then some specials next year out of the eight that we'd been promised. Um, turns out we were pretty much right. Um, they're going to do a six part serialized story this autumn, which it can now makes more sense why they didn't just say that at the panel. I was a bit confused why they wouldn't just let us know. And then there's mm. going to be three, not two, three specials next year. So the two that were already announced, a New Year's Day special, um, which is very exciting. And then one, I think, in the spring. Um, we don't know much about that. And then one in the autumn again for the centenary, which, you know, is going to be a really, sounds like it's going to be a really big episode. Um, I think we talked about the possibility of there being a centenary episode on this podcast before because mm. we are very prescient individuals. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we can say for now, for sure, that, you know, they're not sticking around until the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who, which some people thought might happen, but they are still sticking around to a significant anniversary that is, you know, not miles away. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's we're going to get, even though Jodie Whittaker and Chris Shibble are leaving, we still have actually, we have nine episodes, basically a full series, and also about a year, over a year of actual, like, Jodie Whittaker as the incumbent Doctor time, if you get what I mean, like, and pretty regularly on TV as well. So um, it's going to be going to be an interesting period, I think. And what I think is is particularly interesting about that centenary special is the phrasing in the press release specifically says uh, the BBC asked for an extra special. Mm. Um, it asked for a centenary special, which sounds to me like there was, you know, that you had these eight um these eight episodes established the the uh the six part series and the two specials and then as uh, things started to develop as it became clear that this was you know chris leaving and joe and jody leaving and it's the centenary they went come on let's have can we i think we need one more to cap off this era yeah um, and, which and i think which I, which I think is nice and i'm still plumping for you know a multi-doctor story you know like a little like matt smith matt smith kind of you know, had a multi-Doctor story as part of his last story in the, I think, the, you know, the day of the Doctor leads into the time of the Doctor pretty clearly. True. And obviously, Pete Capaldi had one uh, with the first Doctor for Twice Upon a Time. And it is kind of a nice way for the Doctor to kind of look back and reflect. And if it's a centenary, you know, that of the BBC, Doctor Who's been such a big part of the BBC for so many years, you know, I would love to see some old faces, you know, kind of giving Jodie a send-off, you know. I mean, who knows? She's busy mates with David Tennant, right, from Broadchurch. <laughs> 10th Doctor yeah. and 13th Doctor. I think it would break At the, the very internet. least. Yeah, yeah. At, the yeah. Very, at the very least. Yeah, I, I think it's a... I mean, I'll sh- I'm sure we'll talk about this centenary episode. Yeah, this will also be another issue episode. of the podcast, I think. <laughs> but, I, but I do think there's a balance to be struck between uh, celebrating 100 years of the BBC and Doctor Who in, uh, you know, in mm. general as a huge, important piece of BBC like iconography and then also just giving Jodie Whittaker the send-off she deserves and I hope that like the latter thing doesn't get lost as part of the former thing like it I hope you know it, I think I feel like if Matt Smith had regenerated at the end of Day of the Doctor you would have felt like it wasn't really his final episode it was like yeah. a celebration episode in which he happened to regenerate um he needed time of the Doctor to come after it to service his, his send-off so I think that's a delicate balancing act of how much is it a celebration of Doctor Who and how much is it Jodie's send-off it can absolutely be both and be brilliant but like it's a it is a tricky balance to to strike uh, I think you know there's there's a lot of tricky things they've got to work out in the next year or so a lot of tricky things for us to work out and speculate about you know we we were all geared up to be excited about series 13 but now we've also I'm thinking about the spring special now and what what that's going to be about um maybe an Easter special that'd be cool you know, we're going to be, oh, what's going on in the BBC centenary special of Doctor Who? What's going to happen in the New Year's Day special of Doctor Who? I mean, there's lots going on. Who's the next Doctor? Who's the new showrunner? Who's the new writers? Who's the new companions? If we can assume there's nothing about whether Mandip Gill and John Bishop are staying on, we assume not because it tends not to be, but you never know. I mean, yeah, there's definitely, you know, this is really just the start, I think. Although it's, you know, a story about an ending for Jodie Whittaker and for Chris Chibnall in a way, it's kind of also we're entering the most exciting period, I think, of the Doctor Who life cycle, which is, ooh, what's coming next? 
yeah and, and, and not to get too like gushy about it but i think it's like genuinely one of the most brilliant things about doctor who that it turns something that should be um a negative into into such a massive positive because in no other show or film franchise or anything like that is your lead actor and your sort of lead creative force leaving the most exciting time <laughs> I mean, the best it's, thing Way. yeah but not not and, and that's in no way like it meant to be a negative statement against, against jody or chris or or any of the previous stars or, or showrunners um but with any other franchise right that would be a disaster it's like oh no we've lost our lead actor oh no we've lost you know the showrunner whereas it is the most exciting time to be a doctor who fan because it's the time when you get to to speculate and go oh, who's the new doctor gonna be who's the new showrunner gonna be at least in terms of like speculation it's such an exciting time so it's a you know it's a regeneration is a great innovation yeah that's like a, an original observation but <laughs> The point is that, yeah, it's it's remarkable how Doctor Who does turn that negative into a positive and makes what should be, you know, and it is an, it is an upsetting time. I'm sure fans will miss um, Jodie and will, and will miss Chris Chibnall, but uh, it's also a very exciting time looking ahead to the future. Definitely. Um, and we'll be looking ahead with you guys over the coming weeks and months, for sure. We're, we're going to wring so much content out of this. We're going to talk, <laughs> and you're going to be sick of hearing us talk about it on the podcast. Uh, but for now, uh, please let us know what you think about the, you know, the announcement. Uh, are you excited to see what Jodie Whittaker and Chris Chibnall have left in the tank? You know, what do you think we could see in the BBC Centurion special? Who do you think the next Doctor should be? Uh, let us know in the comments on YouTube or on Twitter at Radio Times. Um, we'll be back. Um, a little later uh, than usual. We we'll probably won't have a full episode next week because of this uh, extra special, um, but we will be back to talk all things Series 13 and all these speculative ideas we've been chatting about. Um, until then, I've been Hugh. I've been Morgan. Uh, and if you'd like to speculate about who you'd like to replace us on this podcast, <laughs> uh, please do so below uh, and copy in HR. Uh, thanks for listening and goodbye. <laughs>